I'm Keith Elkins. I'm working with a Distinctive Style magazine. Yes. Glad to uh, meet you and, and appreciate you talking with us. You've been dubbed Broadway's Song and Dance Man by the New York Times. How would you dub yourself? <laughs> the same thing. I am a song and a dance man. I've been doing it since I was a little kid growing up at Covington, Kentucky. And whenever there was music on, I got in the middle of the floor and I started singing and dancing. And my mother sent me to dancing school and I attended a dancing school which taught tap toe ballet, acrobatic baton, ballroom, voice personality, and culture. And so uh, during my school years, I have always been trained. And then I was a theater arts major at the University of Cincinnati. And I had a ba ballet scholarship at the College Conservatory of Music. And I studied voice there. So I was, thank God, very well trained because I've always known what I wanted to do. I think I'm a very lucky person. You mentioned Covington, Kentucky, and your childhood there. Is that what led you to the career in choreography, performing and directing on Broadway? Well, yeah, because uh, studying there and then in school, I did a lot of the variety shows. And then when I went to college because of my major, uh, I got a lot of training there. And then my junior and senior year, I basically was doing all of the musicals that were done at school. I directed them, choreographed, plus starred myself. I was no fool. And uh, it was really terrific. So when I came to New York, I was well trained, and I went to my first audition and my first job, and was hired by Juliet Prowse. And I went to Las Vegas with her club act, and then I came back uh, to New York and did Sweet Charity with Bob Fosse and Gwen Verdon. Then I went back to Juliet, then I came back to New York, and I did Will Parker for Richard Rogers, who selected me to play the role at Lincoln Center. And then from that point on, I kept doing roles, like Dwayne Fox and Applause with Lauren Bacall, I did Lorelei with Carol Channing, Hello Dolly, where I played Cornelius Hackle. And uh, then, of course, I did the producers on Broadway, 42nd Street, uh, Billy Lawler, and uh, An Evening with Jerry Herman, La Cage Folle. I played the lead in La Cage Folle on Broadway. And uh, so a lot of Broadway shows. Beauty and the Beast I did on Broadway. And uh, so I, I'm a lucky guy. Is there any one of those positions or roles that you enjoyed more than the other? Not really. The most demanding one was La Cage Fall, only because of all the stuff you had to wear. And uh, that was the most demanding, but it was also very rewarding. But they all have a special place. You know, it, uh, as they use the old uh, adage, it's like having children. You don't really have a favorite because they're all so different. And I just like to work. And of course, I'm thrilled to be working with Kay Ballard, who's been my friend since 1971. I was her opening act when I was on tour with Applause with Lauren Bacall on the weekends in Chicago with Mr. Kelly's. I was the opening act for Kay Ballard. And that's where we became friends. And I've known her through the generations. We did a production of Funny Girl together. And uh, we've always been great pals. And this is a perfect chance. And uh, actually, Kay asked for me to do this. So I'm very pleased to be here. And Lillian Montevecchi, I've known since the 80s when she did uh, Nine on Broadway and I fell in love with her then and we've been very good friends during the years and so it's a good excuse for three people to get together who really love each other, love what they're doing and we love animals and all of our proceeds are going to animal organizations. So that's why we're doing it, doing it for love. The Texas Humane Legislation Network. Yes, yes. So a uh, special uh, treat for you as well. Tonight. Yes, back. yes, absolutely. Oscar Wilde regards theater as the most immediate way in which a human being can share with another the sense of what it is to be a human being. Beyond the immediacy, what does theater bring to the human experience? Well, it, it gives people a chance to feel and to also interact with other people by sitting in an audience and watching something live because it's never the same twice. You never get the same stage performance. You can run a film over and over, but you can't do that on stage. It's always different because the audience is different. And so you go out every night, it's like you don't tell the jokes to the same people all the time. So it gives you a whole different experience, and it's that one-on-one, -on -one and uh, it's a very healthy thing. I mean, people shouldn't be sitting at home in their rooms just going to town on a computer. They should be out being with other human beings and having that live experience. And also, it doesn't matter how good a sound recording is, it's never as good as hearing music live, at least not to me. You mentioned your childhood experiences. Do you think social media makes it easier or harder for young people these days to realize their theater arts dreams? 
Well, I, I don't know quite what the social media would be necessarily. You're talking about like television and that kind of thing. Facebook, Twitter, all yeah, well, the, all you the know, social media today. Uh, it, it is, but the, the thing is then you're dealing with inanimate objects on a screen rather than us talking together. And I get to see your facial expression. Right, of course, they could do that on Skype, but it's not quite the same thing. And I, I think it's great. Don't get me wrong. I think it's phenomenal uh, that you can take out you know, your iPad and find some information just by, you know, going through the system, but there's nothing better than interacting with human beings. Uh, we must never lose that experience. Final question. Among your many awards and honors, which has been the most meaningful to you and why? Uh, I think getting my honorary doctorate from uh, the College Conservative of Music at the University of Cincinnati because uh, I, I have, I'm indebted to have those many years that I spent at school and uh, I, I think that was the proudest thing for me to have received is that honor from the university. Welcome to Austin. Appreciate you talking with it's us. It's my pleasure. Thank have you. A great show I, I intend to. <laughs>
it would have been just as easy for her to say, we're through, and walk out and still have a hilarious movie. But I guess some executives said, well, if we want to make money, we got to show it. You want to say, oh, you know. People pumping away on the screen is not funny to me, not interesting, not sexy, not anything. I don't I know why they do it. would agree with you. Don't you agree? Yeah. What, what one character trait? No, you don't agree. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm old. Actually, I do. <laughs> I'm well, 86, so therefore I can say it. I would never know that. Oh, I wanted you to say that. That's why I said that. <laughs> Let me ask you, what one character trait do you think was most responsible for propell propelling you from Cleveland to Broadway and Hollywood? Because I always knew what I wanted to do. Aren't always. I lucky? In, from the first moment I saw a movie, I knew what I wanted to do. Isn't that lucky? I never look back. Never look back. Never, 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 never. Because I, I've met incredible people in my life. I've always respected what came before me. And, and consequently, I met every idol that I ever had. Betty Davis, Barbara Stanwyck. And I knew them, so it was really wonderful. And exciting. Judy Garland, I knew very well. And Bert Lahr, I did a, a show with. And, and Ray Bolger, you know, I saw Wizard of Oz 40 times. And then later on, I was in this show with them. I thought, wow. I w I've always been starstruck. I'm starstruck with you. Look what you've achieved. <laughs> oh, thank you. Me as well. Oh, Here's I should have showed you my purse. I just had a picture of George Clooney and I because I played his mother in one uh, series called The Law and Mrs. McGraw with Jerry Orbach, who I worked in Carnival with, and he was so adorable then. And that was just six months before he got ER. Really? And I used to say to him, George, you're so beautiful. You should be in movies. Well, look what happened. <laughs> Good advice. <laughs> Let me put you on and the spot. Is there one of those celebrities that you have an especially soft spot in your heart for? What do you mean? Anyone that, that uh, I guess, being able to meet them, spend time and with them. And get to know them. Like Betty Davis. I, I knew her very well. It's so funny. When she called me when she was in New York and she said, come to the Lombardi Hotel. And that's when she had a stroke and, and I brought a priest with me because who was a friend of mine. So we walked in there and she looked at me and said, don't ever have a stroke. I said, God, I wasn't thinking of it. You know. <laughs> she, I just, I had really admired the people that I saw. And, well, and I, of course, my series was with Eve Arden, who was truly a wonderful star. And the people that I've worked with, like Imogene Coco and, and Sandy Dennis, I've done plays with them. And like Imogene Coco never got the credit she should have. Uh, that, that also frustrates me. The people in this business that have so much didn't get the, the credit they deserve. Mimi Hines is one of my best friends. J.P. Morgan is another one. You know, I, it, nothing is fair, you know that. Sure. <laughs> now, you are also a big pet lover. I have four, four. Two adopted, which I think is very important for people to adopt pets. Because I love those, too, as much as the two that I bought. Does that make sense to you? Absolutely. I have a rescue myself. Is, is Good for tonight's you. Tonight's performance, because it is being sponsored Every by penny. the Texas Humane Legislation Network, yes. a special performance for you? I also gave my Fanny Bryce album to them to sell as long as they want for the pets, because I don't want anything from it. And yet, hey, listen, I, wasn't, I never made money in the show business. These people make money. I live on my pension every month. But somebody's got to take care of the pets. But when you think about the money people make today and they don't know what to do with it, I just could slap them in the middle of the next week. It's so easy to, just like people, you're going to hate me for this, like people that give money to politics. Aren't they kidding? I mean, that's a joke, $100 million to elect somebody? That's insane. What do you think your, your love for pets is as strong as it is? Because they give my heart exercise. They make me smile in the morning no matter how I feel. Isn't that good? Oh, yeah. That's worth everything. And their love is, uh, is always there. They're all unconditional love. 
Absolutely. Let's face it. Thank you so much. It's been Thank a pleasure. You. And Thank good you luck for tonight.